with my life, I have no interest because I saw every subject as a study, as work, and I excelled at every subject just for the purpose of excelling and not learning. And quite frankly, I'm very scared. John Teller Gatto, a retired school teacher and activist critical of compulsory schooling, asserts, we could encourage the best qualities of youthfulness, curiosity, adventure, resilience, the capacity for surprising insight simply by being more flexible about time, texts, and tests, by introducing kids into tr truly competent adults, and by giving each student what autonomy he or she needs in order to take a risk every now and then. But we don't do that. Between these cinder block walls, we are all expected to be the same. We are trained to ace every standardized test, and those who deviate and see light through a different lens are worthless to the scheme of public education, and therefore viewed with contempt. H.L. Mencken wrote in the American Mercury for April 1924 that the aim of public education is not to fill the young of this species with knowledge and awaken their intelligence. Nothing could be further from the truth. The aim is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level to breed and train a standardized citizenry, to put down dissent and originality. That is the aim in the United States. To illustrate this idea, doesn't it perturb you to learn about the idea of critical thinking? Is there really such a thing as uncritically thinking? To think is to process information in order to form an opinion. But if we are not critical when processing this information, are we really thinking? Or are we mindlessly accepting other opinions as truth? I must retrain myself and constantly remember how insane this ostensibly sane place really is. And now here I am in a world guided by fear, a world suppressing the uniqueness that lies inside each of us, a world where we can either acquiesce to the inhuman nonsense of corporatism and materialism or insist on change. We are not enlivened by an educational system that clandestinely sets us up for jobs that could be automated, for work that need not be done, for enslavement without fervency for meaningful achievement. We have no choices in life when money is our motivational force. Our motivational force ought to be passion, but this is lost from the moment we step into a system that trains us rather than inspires us. We are more than robotic bookshelves, conditioned to blurt out facts we were taught in school. We are all very special. Every human on this planet is very special. So aren't we all deserving of something better? Of using our minds for innovation rather than memorization? For creativity rather than futile activity? For rumination rather than stagnation? We are not here to get a degree, to then get a job, so we can consume industry-approved application after application. There is more, and more still. The saddest part is that the majority of students don't have the opportunity to reflect as I did. The majority of students are put through the same brainwashing techniques in order to create a complacent labor force working in the interests of large corporations and secretive government. And worst of all, they are completely unaware of it. I will never be able to turn back these 18 years. I can't run away to another country with a different education system, perhaps meant to enlighten rather than Christian. This part of my life is over, and I want to make sure that no other child will have his or her potential suppressed by powers meant to exploit and control.